Today we're in a series called Emotional Damage. Emotional Damage. Um, it is our second week. Michael Ballard kicked it off by talking about dealing with your doubts the last week. And today we're in this series. And really the part and the heart of this series is talking about dealing with emotions. Emotions are going to be a part of our life, right? This series is not saying that emotions aren't real, that you aren't really feeling emotions. It is saying this, you're going to have emotions and emotions are a real part of your life. But just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean that your emotions are true. Big difference. They're real, but just because they're real doesn't mean that they are True, and we're in a series talking about how do you deal with your emotions because the alternative is this. If we don't learn how to deal and manage our emotions, our emotions are dealing and managing us. And two of the most dangerous, most destructive, most deceiving words that I feel is in our culture right now are the words, I feel. Well, I feel. I, I feel this. I feel that. In fact, we are going to be doing a sermon that I was going to push off till September. Um, we were in our Urban Legends series. We're bringing it back. But um, I was going to talk about transgender and gender identity um, in that series. We're going to do that at the end of this month. Um, the end of June. So here's what I'm asking you as your pastor. Show up. I'm asking you to pray because we're going to speak the truth in love. I'm not going to get up here and rage like an idiot, but also we're not going to just cower away from what God's word says is true because everybody else is talking about this. And let me give you the why, because some of us are like, well, why would a pastor ever preach about this? Because our culture is screaming what is truth because I feel Right? I feel this way. But what does God's word say about this? And so we're going to be tackling this in a biblical, loving way. So show up. Invite your friends to, to we're not, I ain't scared. Come on. So, um, so, so here, here's where we're at. Here's why, where we're at as a culture. We say, if I feel a certain way, then this way must be true. Right? If I feel this way, then this way must be true. And it goes right in with Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, where it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but, in the, but its end is the way to death. There's a way that seems right. There's a way that feels right, that sounds right, that looks innocent enough. There's a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to death. So today I want to talk to you about an emotion that for the most part is a great emotion. Most of, most of us, when I'm getting ready to talk about the topic we're going to speak about today, you're going to be like, huh, I've never viewed that as a negative thing. In fact, I haven't viewed it as a negative thing. Um, and this is an emotion I struggle with big time. And today I want to talk to you about the emotion of excitement. The emotion of Excitement. Are there anybody, is anybody else out there you struggle with getting excited? Come on. Football, football time's coming around, so every man in this place should have his hand up in the air, right? Like you get, we, we can get so easily excited and caught up in the moment. Um, man, there's a touchdown that is scored. You're screaming and you're tackling your buddy and you broke his arm. Why? Because your team just won the game. We get so excited about different things in our life. And here's the deal. For the most part, excitement is great. It's a great thing. It's a good thing. But excitement left unchecked can become a very damaging detrimental, destructive thing if we don't know how to filter the emotion of excitement. So today, the title of my message is Licking Toes and Throwing Flames. <laughs> Licking Toes and Throwing Flames. The manager of a downtown Nashville, Tennessee Hilton Hotel has been charged with aggravated burglary and assault after allegedly sucking on a male guest's toes while he was sleeping. You just never know, do you? <laughs> you just don't know. David Patrick Neal, 52, was arrested Friday after... He looks like a toe sucker, doesn't he? <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, that's him. Old toe sucker. 
We're gonna call him David. David was arrested <laughs> Friday after a hotel guest, Peter Brennan, woke around 5 a.m. on March 30th to find the night manager indulging in his apparent foot fetish, according to local ABC affiliate WKRN. You can't make this up. Brennan has since filed a lawsuit against the hotel alleging sexual assault, according to the outlet. The lawsuit alleges that Neil cloned the key to Brennan's room and entered during the early morning hours without knocking or announcing himself. Brennan reportedly screamed when he found Neil sucking on his toes. I would have kicked him in the mouth. Like, you ain't gonna be able to even do this, right? Brennan immediately recognized him as one of two hotel staff members who had been in his room the previous day to help him with his TV. Brennan filed a complaint with the police following the incident. The, it reportedly told officers, he, Neil reportedly told officers he entered Brennan's room because he smelled smoke and wanted to check on him for his safety. Smoke, right? Like, well, while I'm in here, why not? Um, so Neil... Neil didn't report a smoke smell to hotel security, and surprise, surprise, no one else smelled any smoke, according to police. Brennan said, all my life, you just have that sense of security and that sense of peace, right? It's not like you're camping and you have to keep one eye open, Brennan told the local outlet. You have that security that when you close your eyes, you feel like you're safe and you're protected, and it was a complete violation. I was just so, so shocked, Brennan said. When he woke up, he yelled, who are you? Why are you in my room? It was almost like a dream, a sort of nightmare. It just didn't make sense. Why is this person touching me? Brennan reportedly suffers post-traumatic stress and struggles to get to sleep in the wake of the alleged toe-sucking incident. Um, <laughs> That is verbatim Fox News that Jeff Wagner sent. So I have to sort and credit my source. Um, there are so many questions I have, right? I wonder if Brennan sleeps with socks on now. Um, I just wonder like so many things that has happened. And the reason I'm talking about this and I'm bringing this up, you're going, where are you going right now? Buckle up, it's gonna make sense. What happened? This guy is sick, right? We understand that, gross, disgusting. But when he went into this guy's room, maybe the guy doesn't have socks on. Maybe the guy's wearing flip-flops. He's like, those are some attractive toes. Um, and he's like, I know, I'm gonna do this. And, and what happened was he got excited and he acted before he thought about the fallout that was gonna happen. Right? And as disgusting and as gross as this is, can I tell you, this is the, the, the emotion that was evolved. This is the emotional damage, the emotional fallout that happened. And why we might, hopefully, hopefully, you've never done this. If so, we have a prayer team at the end of service, and I would love to pray with you. But um, if, if we would never do this, but there's other things that we let excitement and we get caught up in the moment and we don't think about the fallout. We don't think about, we act before we think. Does that sound familiar? We act before we think. And as a result, there's emotional damage that is happening to your life and to my life. Proverbs 19, verse two through three talks about this. It's one of my favorite Proverbs. It says, enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Excitement without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness, by getting caught up, by getting excited about the moment, right? And then are angry at the Lord. You've seen this. Why would the Lord ever let this happen? It's simple, because you became a prisoner of the moment. You got so excited, so worked up, that you didn't ever ask in the first place, was this God's will and purpose for me? You just moved and you got caught up in the moment because that's what excitement makes us do. There's gotta be a better way for you and I to live. And the truth is this, is that excitement isn't a bad emotion, but left unchecked, it leads to destructive consequences and results to our life. And here's why, because excitement is unaware of collateral damage and is just caught up with the here and now. Excitement, it, it's unaware of the collateral damage. It's unaware of the fallout. It's just caught up in the here and now. This past Christmas, I got one of my favorite Christmas gifts of all time. Um, this is a blowtorch that connects to a propane tank. 
Um, and it, it, Father's Day's next week. If you don't have one of these men, you need one in your life. They are not that crazy expensive. You can buy them on Amazon. Ladies, just add it to the 20 things already in your cart and um, it'll be great. And here's the deal. I got to use this about a month ago for the first time. I have been counting the days. And I had sprayed some weeds. I had to wait till the weeds died. And then I got to burn all the weeds up around my pool. And I cook, hook, hooked this thing up to a propane tank. I lit it. And there is an adjustment on here to a small flame or a large flame. Men, where do we put this? Large flame. I like this thing, I'm like pop, 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 boom. And it's like, when I press it, it's like, whoa, I'm like, yes. I took my shirt off for no reason whatsoever. I did. I had a tank top on underneath and I'm carrying the propane in one and I feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger or like Sylvester Stallone in an old action movie and I'm like, oh, like this. And I'm standing like this far away and Casey's like, couldn't it be a smaller flame? I'm like, that's nonsense, woman. This is man work right now. <laughs> Don't question me. <clears throat> and I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm carrying my propane tank. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And Casey comes out and she's like, and they're all taking pictures the whole time. They're like, my dad's absolutely over the top ridiculous. And so um, I'll post it later. Um, and so I, I'm doing this and Casey's like, babe, babe, babe. Oh, oh. The, the, the landscaping, the landscaping's on fire. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and in the process of me burning all the weeds up, I burned a bush. And I'm, I could have had my own Moses and God moment right there with the burning bush moment, right? Like I'm like, hey, it's biblical, right? And so I'm like, well, I've got, I'm not putting this out. Like you're gonna have to come hold this. Don't, don't mess it up, babe. Don't turn it down, right? And so Casey had to come grab this and I like got this going here and I grabbed this bucket and I get into our pool that's salt water and I douse the bush and it's like, it's totally dead. It's totally, I'm, I'm thinking it might make a comeback, right? There's a sermon in there. So I'll take a picture of that too and post it later. But I'm like, ah, it might come back. It's got a shot. It's not coming back. And can I tell you, this right here is a perfect picture of what excitement does to our life. Amen. Right? It's, here's, here it is. It's not that excitement doesn't care. It's that excitement is unaware. Right? It's not that you don't care. It's not that you're heartless. It's you're unaware that there's collateral damage that's happening because you're just caught up in the moment. But hear me, that doesn't excuse you from the damage that is being done. Well, I didn't mean to still doesn't matter, right? Oh, I didn't mean to doesn't take away the emotional damage that is happening in your relationships and in your life and all the collateral damage that is happening. There is a better way for you and I to live our life out. And the answer and the question becomes this, are you following or excitement or are you filtering excitement? Right? Are you, are you filtering excitement or are you following excitement? Because here's the simple reality. We get excited about a lot of things. We get caught up in a lot of things. All the parents here, they got little kids. You want to pe see people lose their mind? Go to a little league game. You want to see your pastor lose his mind? When my daughter was playing basketball, oh, I, was, I didn't wear anything that had FC on it. I had nothing on there that said anything about Jesus or come to Foundation Church. I was there, dad mode, full on, like, you're an idiot. What are you doing? I remember one ref looked at me, and I'm like, he's like, do you want to leave? I'm like, you need to leave because you know I'm right right now. That's why you're mad. Anyways. Here, here's where we get excited, we get caught up, and in the moment, there's collateral damage that happens. We get too involved, we push too hard. Some of us, it's our hobbies, it's the things that we're into, whether that's fixing cars, whether that's a golf game, whether that's gaming online, whether that's shopping on Amazon, ladies. Ooh. He doesn't know that there's things in my cart. I'm just waiting for payday. Um, you know, they, there's... Pickleball, we get excited, we get caught up. And all of a sudden we say, we don't have time for this, we don't have time for this, we don't have time for this, we don't have money for this. <coughs> we have no margin for this, it's because we got caught up and we got excited about this. And there's collateral damage that has happened. 
Some of us, it's not even that. We pick on all our single people for a while. You're like, he's here. She's right there. Some of you, you're caught up in a new relationship because you're not alone anymore. And you're excited about it. And guess what? You should be. If you're not excited about your relationship and you've been dating a month, it's time to say bye. Right? Like, there's something wrong. You're like, we're two weeks in and we're really trying to just make it through. Like, that's not a good sign. Like, <laughs> no, it's not time to grind through here and survive. Like, it's time to say bye-bye. Right? And you're excited about the relationship because you're not alone anymore. And somebody's noticing you and somebody wants you and you're being like chased and that's great and that's wonderful. But here's the problem. We get excited and we don't pay attention. Oh, I can do this. But the question is, should you do this? Oh, I can be in this relationship. And you're excited and you're excited. And in the midst of the excitement, you're not asking, should I be in this relationship? Is this God's will? Is this God's purpose for me? Right? We get caught up in all the things, <clears throat> all the house things, all the fashion things, all the car things. And we spend and we spend and we spend. And our house looks awesome because we're excited and we're fun. And we look like Chips and Joanna Gaines just threw up in our house. <laughs> like, bleh, right? Like, and it looks trendy. And you switch from gray to white to blue and whatever the new color is, right? And you're just like, I got to keep up with the trends. And, and your husband's got paint all, and you got every paint color and furniture, and, and you have spent, and you have spent, and you can't build God's kingdom because you are literally building your castle. And we're going, whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? What happened was we got excited, and we didn't have a filter for our excitement. You can, but the filter says... Should you? In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17, says this, be very careful then how you live. One of my favorite verses. Not as the unwise, but as the wise. Making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And if you and I aren't going to get caught up in the moment, if we aren't going to live life foolishly and emotionally, but instead we're going to live it out intentionally and make the most of every opportunity, then we have to understand this, and this will help us handle the emotion of excitement and not have emotional damage. We have to understand a spirit-led life is full of self-control. It is not out of control. A spirit-led life is full of self-control. It is not out of control. Spirit-led life is a life that's being lived out wisely and carefully, not emotionally. And you can't, hear me, you can't live that way on your own. You can't. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. You're not disciplined enough because the simple truth is most of the time we become servants of what we feel and what we get excited about. But there's got to be a filter in which we check this excitement and this feeling in, and it's called self-control. Now, self-control defined means this. Self-control is called temperance in the King James Version, and it is the ability to control oneself. It involves moderation. hey -oh. Constraint. Ah, oh, this sermon's the worst. <laughs> and the ability to to say no, I would even put this, the willingness to say no. Some of you, you're able, you're just not willing. The ability and willingness to say no to our base desires and fleshly lust. Galatians chapter five, verse 22 through 23 says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit, talking singular, fruit in our lives. Most of us, when we grew up going to church, we heard the fruits of the Spirit, and we thought love was here, and joy was here, and peace was here, and goodness was here. But the Bible is saying this, it is the fruit, singular, of the Spirit, that one fruit contains all these attributes. And most of us know love, joy, and peace, and we stop there, because all the other ones were like, ugh. It's like honeydew melon. Nobody likes honeydew melon. Like, like that's the trash of all the melons. It's not watermelon. It's not cantaloupe. It's not strawberries. Like, and what do they give you at every restaurant? I have a side of fruit. It's pretty much a side of honeydew melon because it's cheap and nobody wants it. And we look at the rest of the fruit of the spirit like that's honeydew melon. No, 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 no. 
It's the fruit of the Spirit. Patience, honeydew. Kindness, I don't want to. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if the Spirit is leading your life, your life can't be absent of self-control. Because if you're not in control of your emotional self, then your emotional self is in control of you. And here's what I would tell all of us in this place. If you are a follower of Jesus, if you're not a follower of Jesus, man, it's a good timing right now, but we're gonna correct that at the end of service. So um, if you're not a follower of Jesus, this doesn't apply to you. If you are a follower of Jesus, hear me, something is leading you bigger than you. Something better be leading you bigger than you or your emotions. And that something, that someone is the Holy Spirit. And is the Holy Spirit driving and leading your life because the simple truth is most of us, it's our emotions. Well, what am I excited about? What do I feel good about? And we start running after that. When God's never even called you to run after that, that just feels good and seems good. And there's a better way for you to live out your life in a wise way that makes the most of, our, most of every opportunity because enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Enthusiasm without understanding is no good. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna make a mistake, you're gonna blow it, and then you're gonna get mad at God. And be like, well, why did he even give me these emotions? That's part of life, but you've got to have a filter to deal with these emotions. The Bible says this. It's found in Proverbs 15, verse 28. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. What's that mean? Back in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament days, if a city didn't have a wall around it protecting it, it was a big deal. In fact, this is what the book of Nehemiah is pretty much about. The walls of Jerusalem have been destroyed. In the first chapter of Nehemiah, the first four verses, Nehemiah finds out about the, the walls being destroyed. And he says this, he says, things in Jerusalem were not going well and the people were in trouble because the walls were broken down. Why was it a big deal? Because they were vulnerable to attack and they were easily defeated. And what Nehemiah is saying and what the Bible is saying in Proverbs that a person without self-control is like a city with the broken down walls is this, is that if you don't have self-control, it's not going well with you and you're in big time trouble. Because that's not the way God has intended you to live your life out. When we first moved into our house, some of you have seen this before, but we have a retaining wall in our backyard. And when we moved into our house, we had torrential downpours that March. And as they came, here's what happened to our retaining wall. Um, our retaining wall busted. It broke up. I think we got a picture, if you can throw that picture up. And this is our retaining wall. And here's the problem, is that all the mud and all the water, all the landscaping was destroyed. All the mud and the sludge went into my pool. And we had a major, major, major mess. And we had to get on this quickly. My neighbor, Carlos, who watches sometimes was like, oh, you got a problem, Justin. I'm like, I got a problem, right? And we had to get on this and correct this and address this quickly because the longer we went get without getting this corrected, the more damage was being done. And can I tell you the same thing? Some of us, our life looks just like that. And the longer you go without self-control in your life, the more damage is being done. The more things that you are saying, the more things you are committing to that you're not called to commit to, the more relationships you're getting involved in that you're not called to get into that relationship in the first place, the more you're getting caught up, the more you're following your emotions. Why? Because your life looks like my wall, and the more you don't address it, the more damage is being done. And if your life is being led by the Holy Spirit, your life is never out of control because he's in control. And something bigger than you has to be leading you. So let me leave you with this. Understand this. What do we do? What's the alternative? Then we understand that it is better to live by your values and your commitments than by your feelings and emotions. It is better to live by your values and your commitments than by your feelings and your emotions. This means you do the right thing even when you don't want to. That's self-control. Is that you are doing what you committed to. All the married people in this place, there's gonna be hard times in your marriage 
You do the right thing, that you, you live your life based on the values and commitments that you have made to one another and to your heavenly Father, not by your emotions and what you feel. This means doing the right thing even when you don't want to. It means living your life that your Sunday life looks like your Friday night life. hey oh. It means that your history browser on your internet doesn't need to be erased and hidden and you don't have to use DuckDuckGo all the time. It means that your parents can look at your cell phone anytime, kids, and you're not scared. Well, why do you want to look at it? I don't know what's going on. Well, I guess what, parent? You need to be in that phone if they're like, oh, I don't want you to look at my phone. It means that you aren't being led by your emotions, but you're being led by what you know is right. The other thing to help you master excitement is this, is that you pray about everything all of the time. It's not just about self-control, but that you keep praying about everything, not some of the time, but all the time. Colossians 4 says this, devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Devote here means to commit yourself to. Are you committed to prayer, or do you just pray when everything falls apart? Commit yourself to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, this is your memory verse. It's super easy. You're gonna remember this so simply. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. And what I have found for a lot of us is that we are great at praying for but not through. We're great at praying for things but we fail to pray through things. We're great at praying for that relationship. God, if you just bring me that man, if you just bring me that girl, like if you just bring it my way, and then they, God brings somebody, or it may not even be God. Somebody just comes your way, and you're like, well, this is it. There's a breakthrough that has happened. My day of famine and like drought has ended. I have found the Lord, and he is good. No, <laughs> no. There's a difference between desperation and obedience. And you stop praying through your relationship and you don't know why everything's wrong. Some of us, we pray for that child, but we don't pray through being a parent until we get to mid-high and everything falls off the wheels. Keep praying through it. Keep praying through it. You're praying for that situation, you're praying for that finance, you're praying for that breakthrough. That breakthrough comes and you stop praying through it. And Jesus said this in John 15. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Can I tell you, prayer keeps you abiding in the vine. It keeps you connected to him because when Jesus says, apart from me, you can't do anything, he means it. As followers of Christ, we can't live out the life that he's empowered us to live, that life that I came that you may have life and have it to the full. You can't live that out on your own. If you're not abiding in the vine, and how do you stay abiding? You keep seeking, you keep praying, you keep thanking, you keep devoting and committing yourself to a life of prayer because that's what prayer does. Because here's the warning, here's the alternative. When you try to do it on your own, you make your own way instead of following God's way. You make your own path instead of following God's path. We kick in our own doors. And we do our own thing. And the challenge is this, is go through God's door. Don't beat down your own. Right? Go through God's door. Don't beat down your own. Luke chapter 11 says this, and so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Woo! Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. It's going, the Lord will open the door. You don't have to kick down the door yourself. My oldest daughter, Charlie, she got stuck once in her room. Like, it's completely locked. We did the whole credit card thing, the Slim Jim thing, like everything we could possibly do, like the little key. I'm like, just do this, Charlie. This doesn't make sense. You know, I'm getting the whole dad anger thing. And so I'm like, just back away from the door. I'm gonna break the door down, right? And this is my moment, and I missed it because I wish I could have just kicked it down just like, pow, right? 
But here's why you don't do that, because I'm paying for the door in the frame. I don't want to have to pay for a new frame and a new door. So I'm like, just back up, and I just try to shoulder bump her, right? Like, uh, uh, nothing. Uh, I'm like, oh, my shoulder, right? <laughs> that hollow door is really solid. Um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're coming in. And I just bust, I bust the door, the door bust. We had to replace the door. Nothing went great. Nothing was, I'm just like, okay, we replaced the door. It cost money, blah, 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 blah. Can I tell you, this is exactly what some of you are doing. You're trying to make your own way and you're beating your own door down. And as a result, there's damage that's happening. There's a relationship you're involved in. Oh, you got the house, but now you can't afford it and you're stressed out. You got the car, oh, we can make this happen. Beat that door down. Now you can't tithe? Well, God understands, no, no, no. It's not how this works. Oh, we got an understanding. No, you don't. Right? Now you're maxed out. You're stressed out. You're dealing with emotions that came because you got excited about the stuff, the things, the relationship, and you're going, how did I get here? And we go back to the Proverbs, enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes, and then people get mad at the Lord for ruining their lives. You're going, how did I get here? Because you beat down your own door. And hear me today. i got to shut up because I could keep preaching this all day. Hear me. Can I tell you, some of God's best yeses is his biggest no. And he is saying no to you, and he hasn't opened the door to you because he knows a better door is coming. And you're going to miss the better door if you keep trying to knock down your own. In fact, to illustrate this, as we were looking for a new building, and we were back at Darlington, there was a church building um, really close to our other facility that we were looking at. It was a very traditional facility, and we were like, okay, this is it. This is going to be great. It's got a lot more room, it's not that far away. Um, it was gonna cost millions of dollars to renovate, to look like us, to be like us. <clears throat> but we're like, okay, this is gonna be a great thing. We get there, take the staff in, take the board in, we're like, yes, 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 this is it, this is it. We get a contract, we sign the contract, and they come back, and all of a sudden, they sold the church to another church. They sold the building, those sorry suckers, I'm like, but, but we signed a contract and we agreed on a price and you said nothing about selling this to somebody else. Well, business is business. I'm like, you know what? I got some words for you. I can't say from a pulpit right now, but I got some words. I was so mad. I was so angry and I wanted to, we were talked about suing them. No, can't sue another church. That's bad optics. Gosh. I was upset in fact, we had planned to announce it the next Sunday. I told some of you, some of you remember, we got a big announcement coming. My announcement was, well, we were gonna move, but I'm sorry, we're here for a little bit longer. And here's the deal, here's why I'm telling you this. Do you realize if we would have beat that door down, this door would have never opened. This facility would have never been here, and this facility is way better location, way better building. God has done immeasurably above and beyond what I could have ever asked, think, or imagined because we didn't try to beat a door down. And what's true for this church and what's true for me is true for you. Some of you, you are trying to beat that door down. Man, instead, accept the no and allow God to open the door that he wants to open to your life because if you do it his way, if you listen to self-control, if you stop beating down the door and you keep praying and you keep abiding, can I tell you, he will open doors that will blow your mind. He will do things that will blow you away. But don't let emotion come and damage your life. Don't let excitement be the leader of your life. Man, let it be part of the journey, but don't let it lead you through your life because that's an un wise way for you to live your life. Let there be self-control. Let the Holy Spirit lead you, guide you. Keep praying, keep abiding because that is a better and wiser way for you to live. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. <coughs> I thank you for today. And God, this is a sermon and a message. I, I know I struggle with at times. I want to make my own way. I get excited. I get caught up and I do I, I, I don't take time to get knowledge and understanding. And there's collateral damage that happens because it seems like self-control kind of takes a back seat to my emotions at times. 
And so, Lord, I pray today that all of us that are here in this building and watching online, that we would just yield to you. That we wouldn't yield to our emotions, that our emotions and our excitement wouldn't be the one in the driver's seat of our life. But we would understand there's a better way for us to live. And that better way is for you, Holy Spirit, to be in control and to guide and to direct us in all truth. That we wouldn't keep beating down our own doors, but Holy Spirit, we would wait for you to open the doors. And in the meantime of those doors opening, that we would continue to pray, that we would continue to ask, to seek, and to knock. That we continue to abide in you and pray about everything. It's in Jesus' wonderful name. I pray.